I thought I was, for for a brief moment, I thought I was going to be wrong. <laughs> go, oh my gosh, maybe I've thought about this wrong all my life. We do it. Huh. It's that, it's that awkward thinking moment. Hey everybody, on that last video, right here you want to go look at that thing because what we're just talking about is you see those sparks shooting off of the engine now I'm going to go over some stuff because I want to answer some of your questions and actually some of your comments because some of your comments are pretty good some of your comments are absolutely dead wrong it's just not the way stuff works so I thought I'd explain that so you saw that thing shooting sparks right now it was shoot you'd have to go on to the video to see why it was shooting sparks but what is happening is this crankshaft's moving. One of the things that I heard people say and comment was a pretty common comment was that, oh, you don't have all the torque and all the horsepower pushing the crankshaft down and that's why the crankshaft was getting pulled up. Let me tell you why that doesn't work. So, the way this works is, now keep in mind, you have bearing clearance in there. This thing has three and a half thousandths of bearing clearance. So what you're saying is that I showed how this crankshaft moved far enough, and it wasn't the whole crankshaft, that's the point, that this crankshaft moved far enough, bent far enough to actually touch the pickup, which is 90 thousandths away. So this had to move 90 thousandths in order to touch that pickup. Now, that means that if the crankshaft is running horsepower is pushing the crankshaft down well you only can push the crankshaft down a maximum of three thousands three and a half thousands actually it's half of that <clears throat> so the crankshaft is being held perfectly it's it's there you're only maybe able to move it three thousands three and a half thousands the total clearance so saying that the crankshaft which is bending up like this that torque and horsepower and pressure from the pistons and connecting rods pushing the crankshaft down, we're going to keep that straight? That's not the way it works. Okay. Now, I want to show you something. So that was one of the number one comments that I saw was that, oh, that's uh, not forcing it down so it's allowing the crankshaft to move up. That's not the way it works. The crankshaft is being held completely in line in the engine. So to give you a little illustration of how this is working. So imagine this is the end of the crankshaft right here. The crankshaft is being supported, 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 supported by main bearings. The crankshaft is not moving, not going anywhere. The most it can move up and down, left, right, anywhere is three thousandths. So what was going on out here when this thing was getting pulled is this end of the crankshaft, just the snout, was getting bent, okay? Bent in. Now I want you to see something and leave that little tag up there because one of the things that uh, why these things have problems and we already pulled the pan off this we checked bearings I wanted to make sure everything was all okay because we really put a lot of load on this crankshaft I mean a lot of load on the crankshaft that isn't normally there enough so that it moved 90 thousandths to come over and touch that sensor everybody thinks that you're gonna have a problem on the number one main journal you do not the number one main journal doesn't have a problem so keep in mind, so imagine this is the belt pulling on the front of the crankshaft. Watch the middle. Where is it the most amount of movement handle happen? You can see that this thing's moving. All I'm doing is bending right here where my thumb is at. It makes the middle move. Any single time you have any kind of problems with something with a side mount uh, supercharger or any kind of belt supercharger, it always affects the second main. Sometimes going back into the third main. Rarely, never actually that I've seen, does it affect the number one main. You think this thing is pulling over here and it's going to destroy this main bearing? It doesn't. What it's doing is it's bending. 
and you see where it bends, it has more movement over here when I'm pushing right there. All right, that's just good little actual, the way things actually work when you, when you inspect them and you look at it. This thing, everything is fine. Number two, we pulled the number one main bearing, looked like brand new. Pulled the number two main bearing, looked like it had a little bit of uh, coat, a little bit of touch on coating, not a big deal. Exactly what you'd expect because just like that rod bending, that's actually what's going on. Now, what is only bending because I just showed you that the mains are holding the crankshaft, that part is not doing anything. Cylinder pressure pushing down on the crankshaft doesn't keep things straight, it's not counteracting anything crankshaft spinning there that was 100% that snout of that crankshaft going whoo, bending like that all right that's exactly what's happening I also had a uh, clarification John Cadley's actually Cadley's crankshaft actually called me and asked me about the the bolt of the crankshaft I was wrong John it does this this crankshaft does have the bolt that goes all the way through to the number one main that makes the snout cr uh, stronger I'll talk to you guys about that some other time. Now, the other thing, other questions that we had in there and other comments, which are really good, if you would have stuck around to the very end of the video, this last video that we just showed, show you this link again, is, yeah, Kyle's first response out of my son Kyle's mouth was, oh, we should blow that bl uh, blower discharge tube into that other engine on the dyno. Look over here. So obviously now we got different engines on the dyno. So he said, oh yeah, and he was saying it tongue in cheek. Let's blow from here over to here on this engine, <laughs> which I still have over here. This video is coming up, by the way. Big block Chrysler, twin, twin supercharged. So yes, you're exactly right. Uh, if somebody ever wanted to uh, pay us to develop a whole system to test superchargers and have two identical engines running at the exact same time, one engine driving a blower, one engine absorb, you know, eating all of the air so we could figure out stuff, how much horsepower it took, I'm more than happy to do it, but that's a big expensive deal to make happen. But you're right, that is a good way of doing it, and then we kind of discussed that at the very, very, very end of the video. Now, uh, other stuff that I saw was good comments and what I was also thinking was would be a pretty good possibility of possibly building a strain gauge into the supercharger mount so that the supercharger would have to pivot or be allowed to pivot onto a strain gauge and so you measure how much torque it would take or how much torque it was inserting onto the supercharger. That would be a good method too. Uh, then we just have to figure out the math of the distance of the strain gauge. It's not as simple as you just put a strain gauge there and you measure it. Uh, that's not the way it works. Uh, so you'd have to figure out the math of some things of how that would all correlate. Um, but that's an interesting uh, comment also. Um, let's see here. Then the other thing. Oh, I can tell you this too. Dinos do not measure horsepower. A engine dyno does not measure horsepower let's think about it all right I'll show you why talking about that strain gauge a engine dyno unless it is an inertia dyno a engine dyno that applies load to the engine is measuring torque torque is then uh, multiplied by rpm divided by 5252 to give you horsepower so horsepower is the math that's done internally. This dyno and anybody's engine dyno that has a water absorber, eddy, uh, well, eddy current brake, uh, anything that is measuring torque is not measuring horsepower. We measure torque, math is converted to make it into horsepower. Now, on, I cover this on my dyno video that's in our playlist. Inertia dynos like a, uh, not a hub dyno, but a regular wheel dyno, and an inertia dyno measures horsepower. Back calculates to measure torque. Because it's, it's accelerating a weight, certain known weight accelerated at a certain speed, or infinitely different speeds, determines how much horsepower it's making. 
and then they back calculate the torque. Engine dynos measure the torque and calculate the horsepower. So, more good stuff to know, understand, helping you guys know how things actually work. And uh, I think that's all I got for you today. But good comments, I want you to go back and look at that other video, watch it, because it's really interesting how we test in the beginning the twin superchargers, then we test the custom one-off uh, billet one supercharger, and then we test how much horsepower the charger actually takes on the engine, see how we did that.